Welcome back, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Goblins 3. Don't admire the view, Blount. You're going to die if you don't get out of there. If anyone hasn't figured out the puzzle by now, we use the plunger on Chump's head. Ah, an idea! Took him a while to figure that out. There is Chump! He's also a bit clumsy. Chump takes the place of our second goblin in this. Being a parrot, however, he can't exactly do everything that Blount can. Oh, he's writing stuff down. They have idle things now. Actions for when they're not doing anything. But with Chump here, we can do significantly more in this area. Namely, we could get that umbrella. We'll just let him spin around some and land on his head, inevitably. Yeah, Chump, you're a bit silly. Chump lifts on it. Maybe Blount can get the umbrella. If you get Chump to try and get the umbrella, he doesn't have hands. Umbrella! In fact, if you try and get Chump to do anything, it just says Chump has no hands. We have an umbrella! If any of you can see what is happening with the fact that we have an umbrella, I pity you because you have cartoon logic stuck in your head. Now, since we know Chump has no hands, there is no point in sending Chump up there to get the tooth. However, if we put Chump on the flagstone, maybe we might be able to be propelled up there. Indeed, that is what happens. The puzzles in Goblin. You can't see it, but there was a um, animation of a blount's head of um, a saw sawing through wood. It's when he's bored. Basically, the puzzles in Goblin 3 start off simpler, but they end up a lot harder. So, we'll grab a tooth. And now we need to get down. Apparently, he can't go there directly and then proceeds to go there directly. I don't understand Blount's logic either. There we go. We actually have all the items we need now to get off the ship. You guessed how we get off the ship, folks. We get off the ship in the barrel in the stern. Yeah. Let's jump into the barrel, shall we? We're not going to get very far like this. We could saw the rope off. <laughs> it would be better if I hang an umbrella on this barrel. I'll, I'll just do that again, just for his look. Like, eh? Ah, well, right, we'll hang an umbrella off it then, in this tiny hole. Blount, I hope you understand that umbrellas are incapable of stopping you from falling to your death in a barrel. No, he doesn't. Okay, let's saw it off anyway. <laughs> Goodbye, Blount! Yep. Oh, it actually worked. Well, looks like you're not going to die after all. Oh, wait, you're going to die. That looked quite painful. But he does survive. Just. Yeah, that looked painful. And jump lands on your head. You'll notice there are a lot of goblins here. And they all look quite nasty and quite malicious. Also, notice Forbalas. You will see Forbalas a lot later. We can pick up our umbrella again. And we have all the items that we had previously, apart from the tooth, which we lost. These are goblins. Let's try talking to Hercules here. Tell me, my good man, why are you here? Ow! Well, paracetamol will help you there. That's not going to give me any information at all, is it? Here is a hot air vent. We shall jump in it, because we have no self-control. Okay, that's not going to do anything. What if I, if I use my umbrella on it? That one will take us up there. That's handy. What about these ones? If you get 
the feeling that that other goblin there has some significance to this story, you're right. Let's use this one, shall we? Ah, classy man. There's a crevice here. And there's nothing else up here, so let's use the crevice. And the two goblins meet. Goblin Blount is very ugly. But apparently he's... wildly in love. Yeah. Blount, you've got problems. Kissing random goblins that you meet. Or maybe if you don't just kiss them, you won't fall like madly in love with the first goblin you encounter. Blount is a strange character. We'll go draw to that one inside. A bunch of brutes waiting for their boss to hand him the prisoner. Well, we gotta stop that. Now we have purpose! Blount must free the woman that he's fallen in love with after encountering her a grand total of once. Let's go. That's enough. Clear the road. No. That's not going to work. We could offer him a coin. No, that didn't work either. Uh, plunger? Nope, he's just going to stick it on his head. If any of you have figured out the solution to this puzzle, it's not much of a puzzle. This guy doesn't seem very smart. Let's whack him with our golf club. <laughs> ha ha! And he flies into space. Never to be seen again. Okay, let's try Gromelon now. Have you seen what happened to your friend? Yes, he did. And he still smacked you in the head. Well, let's see if the same thing works. Yes, it does! That's two of them down. There's Mac and uh, Banzai. We'll grab a piece of toasty bread. Why is there a piece of toast on the floor? Hmm. Let's check the Goblin News. Oh dear, Blount. Have fun again at your funeral parties, thanks to the merry trio Willow. The first contact as I arrived no brutal arrive is brutal since my ship has been hardly bombarded. Fate makes me meet the beautiful Winona Winona, who disappeared along with the Keith of the Maze after her father Beherin's death. Oh dear Blount, you are so horrifically smitten. Oh well your hair's frizzy and black, maybe she'll like you. Let's go talk to Mac, shall we? If I give you a coin, will you let me pass? You'll smack me in the head twice. Ow! Why are you still alive, Blount? Let's try hitting him with our golf club. Nope, he's fast on the draw. And he hits you three times if you try and hit him. Ouch! Um... Want some bread? Why does he wink at you when he shows you the toast? Plunger! Nope, you're just gonna stick that on your head, are you? That's right. Well, when we come back, folks, Mac. Mac and cheese! No, just Mac. And we'll deal with him, like we have dealt with the two goblins before. Until then, folks, until then.